Well, praise God. Um, I'm excited tonight because, um, you know, a while ago, the Lord, and I've shared it a couple of times here, the Lord spoke to me and said that he was awakening the uh, prayer army nationwide. God is waking everybody up. There's a mantle. There's a, there's a, he's releasing this, this urgency, this desire to pray more than ever. And, and um, that's the only thing that's going to bring change. And so um, what tonight I'm going to talk about, just for a short while, about prayer, obviously, and then we're going to pray. And um, I wanted to read to you a bunch of scriptures tonight because the Lord has called us to watch and pray. And, and, you know, we're going to believe, God, that this house is going to be filled when we come to pray and with young people or every age group here because we need all the generations to pray. And one of the things like that I see often is I just see people crying out to God on our faces. And the Lord reminds me all the time of the book by Reese Howell's Intercessor and uh, of how they brought change even during World War II. And we have that DNA in us. We have his DNA in us. We're partnering with Holy Spirit. And uh, recently we were away, and we were at a prayer meeting praying for gov government officials. And um, I, I, I had an open vision. I was just standing there, and I had my eyes, you know, I was just looking into the spirit realm, and I'm hearing airplanes. I was hearing, I was seeing a scene that was mentioned, I'm going to read it to you, that Reese Howell spoke about and how they prayed and they intercede for the war, for the British to overtake uh, and overthrow the Nazi army. Uh, that, you know, the, the, the planes that were coming at them, they only had 35 planes. The Nazis had 100 and some odd planes, and there was no way they were going to be able to win, but they were praying. And even when it seems like nothing is happening, God is doing something. And so I felt like the Lord said to read some of these, these testimonies of, of the fervency of prayer, because we're in a war right now, as you know. I mean, we have never seen anything like what we're experiencing in America, right? Even in our state, you know, we're going to really hit this tonight, that Governor Murphy, want, he said our state is a, is a uh, sanctuary state for abortion. But we're going to break that covenant of death. We're going to annul that thing. But we have to hit it with a, as like a battering ram. And, you know, and the Lord will give strategy. See, it's not just like we're going to just buck shoot. The Lord's going to give. He gives a strategy in how to overthrow the enemy, right? So I wanted to read this to you because oh, it just gets me so excited when I read this stuff. I love reading revival. I love reading anything about intercession and prayer. I love reading anything and seeing how they transform lives. But see, here's the thing. We have to live a holy life, a righteous life, according to the word of God. Not, not a religious mindset, but we have to yield and surrender ourselves and know that, God, I surrender to you and I'm sold out. Because that's who I want to be. And that's who I want to see change. I want to see transformation. You know, God gives us burdens, right? That's why you're all here tonight. Because we have a burden to see change. We have a burden for our families. We have a burden for our cities. We have a burden for our nation, for our president, for our governor. We have a burden to see change. And God wants us to be the conduit to bring that change. So listen to this. Um, this is so good. In 19, it's, it says here, um, all right, in September 1940, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill received intelligence reports of an impending Nazi air invasion. Since Nazi factories were able to produce planes more quickly than the British, there was little doubt the Royal Air Force would be badly outnumbered. The attack ensued with more than 200 Nazi bombers droning uh, towards England, and only 26 planes rose from British soil to oppose them. See, even when it seems like we're going to lose, God's got a plan, right? Then inexplicably, the, the this on the wall chart began to move eastward. The great Nazi air flotilla, and turned they turned back with 185 of their aircraft down in flames. They were in retreat. Miraculously, against all logistical probability, the Air Force had won the battle. Amazing reports came from the down Nazi pilots. Several were quizzed, quizzed as to why they had turned back when only two planes were attacking. Two, explained one pilot, there were hundreds. 
Another Luftwaffe, I don't know how to say it, officer asked him in perplexity, where did you get all the planes you threw into battle over Britain? His British interrogators managed to mask their surprise. Actually, the powerful Nazi bomber force had been met by a mere handful of a little outmoded Royal Air Force Spitfire and Hurricane fighters. There was no sky full of Royal Air Force planes. A Nazi intelligence officer captured still later came nearest to disclosing the divine source of the mirages which had confused the pilots. And with the striking of your bin, Big Ben clock each evening at nine, the Nazi told the British intelligence offer, officer, you used a secret weapon which we didn't understand. It was so powerful and we couldn't find any countermeasure against it. Well, he was right. There was a powerful force set in motion each evening as Big Ben struck nine, it was the powerful force of a nation in heartfelt prayer against which no countermeasure could hope to prevail. A nation in prayer to the omnipotent God of creation. Each evening as Big Ben in the clock tower of the parliament building struck nine, the people of the British Isles, they prayed for a breakthrough. They prayed for miracles. See, so this, there's, there's multiple um, uh, testimonies to this. And so when we were praying for these government officials, I was hearing this whole scene and I hadn't read this in years. And that's what the Lord was just saying. And we just spoke and prophesied over the nations that they were uh, representing about you know, God, the, the prayer of the saints is what will bring the breakthrough. It's the only thing that's going to bring the breakthrough. We can scream and yell and complain all we want and point fingers and get nasty and act like the world. That doesn't bring change. Prayer brings change, right? And so in Colossians 4, 2, it says that we are to continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. And, you know, as we watch and praise the watchmen, God has called us to be alert and to, to watch in the realm of the spirit. What do I mean by that? To, to discern, to watch, to be alert. And that comes from our prayer time with him as well. So we have to spend time with him. We have to spend time in the word. And, and we, we become very sensitive to the spirit realm. And we recognize and we sense something's not right. God is calling all of us to discern and to be awake so that as we are awakened in the middle of the night, as we are walking through town, as we're sensing something going on, that we, we can you know join forces and pray, call our prayer partners, call people that we know to pray and pray. Look at what happened in Illinois. The, that young kid, that gunman that, that, that shot all those people in Denmark, come on. You know what? We need to be a warring army that's watching at the gates, that's praying, that's alert, that's hearing the strategy, that's hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And so we partner with Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is the one who gives us the sermon. He's the one who gives us that prompting. All right, and so watchmen are called, we're, you know, we're, we're called, we're, we discern the times, we discern what's happening. You may say, well, I'm not really a watchman. Many say, well, I'm not really called to prayer. That's for the intercessors. That's baloney. He says, could you not tarry for one hour? God has called all of us to pray. And it's a, it's a privilege, really, when you're in his presence and you start. And today, oh, my gosh, it, <laughs> the Lord had me praying around the world. You know, it just he just lays stuff on your heart and you just start interceding and praying in the spirit and praying for different people. And, you know, and, and when we are when we are in intercession, we are intercepting the plan of the enemy. That's what that's what intercession is all about. OK, so listen to this. So. In 1 King 8, 44 and 51, in the message, when your people go to war against their enemies at the time and place you send them, and they pray to God towards the city you choose, this temple I built to honor your name, listen from heaven to what they pray and ask for and do what's right for them. See, God is listening. He's listening to the heart's cry of his people that are, are, are taking a stand, that will stand in the gap. Right, that will stand in the gap and pray and believe. I'm going to read a couple of different testimonies. There's um, from Christ for the Nations. I love reading testimonies about uh, Gordon and um, Frida Lindsay. I don't know. I mean, they're old timers. If you don't know who they are, read their books. It's good stuff. And they were, this uh, testimony here, I just want to read you this one. Uh, Gordon Lindsay, Lindsay was an amazing prayer warrior. They started Christ for the Nations. And, um, you know, here they are doing these phenomenal things for Jesus, and their kids have gone awry, right? And um, 
you know, we don't know anything about that, right? And so the kids didn't want anything to do with Jesus. And um, where in the world is it? They, they just started praying and praying. And I want to read to you exactly the burden of prayer. And this is how I was trained. It was like we, we're, we're going to hit we're going to hit heaven and we're not giving up. And um, so, darn it, where did I put it? Um, Gordon Lindsay was praying uh, for his son who was, uh, um, you know, just really in rebellion. And he just literally, he would just pray outside the, his son's room. This, the kid wouldn't go to church. You know, same like, well, nothing's new under the sun, right? They don't want to go to church. They get to a point like, this is so boring. This is ridiculous. Why do I have to do that? There's nothing going on here. Well, he said, really? He just got on his knees, and he would kneel outside his son's room and pray as loud as he could and pray very aggressively. And um, so, he, he, oh, here it is. And he said his son was staying out late, really not doing well in school. And he said his son wanted to sleep all day. And he said there was always real confrontation. And so Dennis ran from his own bedroom into ours and locked the door. And when he didn't open to his father, his, knelt, his father knelt down in front of the locked door and prayed for most of an hour, calling on God to stop him in his tracks at any cost and to save his soul and to rain judgment upon him if necessary, but use love if possible. So Dennis didn't even have a radio in his room, so there was no way of escaping hearing his father praying. And I'm sure that prayer made a lasting impression upon his life for shortly afterwards, Dennis decided to go to Christian college where he found himself, his future wife, and he's a respected author and teacher. And so there's power in prayer. Then their daughter, I think her name was Carol. Lord knows, I don't remember where I put it now. Oh, here it is. She was drifting away from the Lord, and she just was really away from God, not doing right. And she, she was a model, and she... She just was wayward living, refusing to have anything to do with Christianity. And uh, the Lord spoke to Gordon, and he decided to set a time of fasting and praying. The days stretched into weeks, and finally his wife became very concerned. She said, I'm really concerned about your health because of your fasting. And he said, either she's going to die or I will die. He says, but I'm going to fast and pray until we see breakthrough. See, that's the tenacity. That's the prayer. That's the, the pounding, the, you know, the, the, the skies, the heavens, and, and just crying out to God and, and not backing down because we sang the song. You know, we, we trust him. We know him. He's faithful. He's true. But you see, it's not convenient for us. It's not like, okay, I, I prayed 15 minutes. Uh-uh. <laughs> we pray. We pray in the spirit. You know, the Lord had me praying in the spirit all day long, but you get so energized and refreshed from that. And so after 30 days of fasting, Gordon felt that God had answered prayer and that she would come uh, to the Lord, even though they didn't see immediate change, because they didn't. And then it was shortly thereafter that Carol did get saved. She did return to the Lord, you know, because now you would think even though he had the release after 30 days, you would think that, okay, now on the 31st day, the girl's coming back, but it was a couple years later. But now she and her husband, we met her husband, I forget his name. Uh, he was some football player in Israel or China, and, and they have a ministry in Israel, a phenomenal ministry, you see? So our prayers, even though it seems like nothing is happening, it's happening. You know, and I was reading a testimony a while ago uh, with um, Brooklyn Tabernacle, Pastor Cimbala, and their daughter as well. Here they are, they're, they're praying, they're prophesying over people. Drug addicts are getting delivered. The gays were getting delivered. I mean, God was doing a miraculous work, and his daughter winds up connecting with a heroin addict and winds up you know, getting high herself, leaves the church, has nothing to do with God. They didn't see or hear from her for three years. And they prayed, and they prayed, and they prayed. And then one day, they knew something shifted. And they connected, and, you know, she did leave that guy, uh, but uh, that she got married, and, and they have a wonderful church somewhere out in the Midwest. See, prayer works. Prayer changes things. So why am I saying all this today? Because I want you to know it's going to take us, you know, hitting, uh, you know, getting on our faces before God, waiting on him. The key thing is, is hearing and getting the word of the Lord. 
You see, and, and we partner with Holy Spirit, so we know that we get that strategy. We know that we get that direction, and that's what my expectation is here. When we came out here in 1999, and I've shared this many times, I've seen people, we, I, I, I knew there was awakening here, and I would just, I, I love reading about revivals, and I said, Lord, you don't start something and not bring it to fruition. You don't, you know, you're going to cause this awakening to take place, and I would see in my prayer time, my, my vision, people just falling out under the power of God in the streets, you know? And so, yeah, do we want it here in the church? Yeah, but we want it out there, right? And so we want it in the government houses. We want it, you know, in, in our Trenton, Lord Jesus. We want it all over. We want it in the businesses and marketplace, you see? So, you know, so we have to allow the Holy Spirit to unlock our, our limitations, and say, okay, you know what, God, I'm not going to limit you. I'm not going to get discouraged because I prayed for three days and nothing happened. You know, we're going to pray. We're going to pound the gates. We're going to pound. Watchmen stood at the gates. They were watchers. And they forbade what was coming in and commanded what needed to go out. And that's what our job is. Don't think you don't have power. He says he's given us power to tread on scorpions and serpents, and he gives us direction. Now, he's not calling us to pray out of our jurisdiction. You know, we, like, for example, we here, are, 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 we're going to pray, and we're going we're gonna to address tonight is what I really feel strongly, and we'll see how Holy Spirit leads. We're going to pray about Trent. We're going to pray about, you know, Governor Murphy. We're going to pray. Listen, we don't hate him. We hate what he's doing. We hate the spirit in him, okay? The Lord will judge him. That's not our job. But we're going to pray that there's a shift because I don't want this curse on our land. But, you know, but God, God honors the faithful. And so let me read you some scriptures here. I have a lot. Um, well, first of all, we know that in Isaiah 57 and also in the New Testament it says that I will welcome you into my holy mountain and make you joyful in my house of prayer and I accept every sacrifice and offering that you place on my altar for my house of worship will be known as a house of prayer for all nation and you know what we are a house of prayer individually we are houses of prayer all right Jesus uh, in Matthew 21 says he went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers in the seats of those who sold sold doves and he said to them it is written for my house shall be called a house of prayer but you made it a den of thieves then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them see there's a strategy here there's a protocol prayer brings healing prayer brings deliverance and it's not just for a select group of people even when we gather together be prayed up here, be ready for whatever the Spirit of the Lord has to say. Don't be waiting for someone else always praying for you. You pray. And so um, in Luke 21, 36, I'll get to that scripture that I want to read in a minute. Keep awake and then watch at all times. Be discreet, attentive, and ready, praying that you may have the full strength and ability and be accounted worthy to escape all these things taken together that will take place to stand in the presence of the Son of Man. In the message version, be on your guard. Don't let the sharp edge of your expectation get dulled by parties and drinking and shopping. Shopping. Lord Jesus. Otherwise, that day is going to take you by complete surprise. Spring on you suddenly. Stop it, Rich. Spring on you suddenly like a trap, for it's going to come on everyone everywhere at once. Wow. So whatever you do, don't fall asleep at the wheel. Pray constantly that you will have the strength and the wits to make it through everything that's coming and end upon your feet before the Son of God. So what he's saying is, you say, how do you pray all day? You can be prayerful all day. I pr you can be praying in the Spirit all day. You know, just your mind is on the things of heaven. Think on whatsoever is pure and good and holy and of good report, right? So the Lord's looking for intercessors and, and to pray the impossible. Not to say, well, you know, I don't know if this is ever going to change. Yeah, it's going to change because prayer changes things, right? In Second Chronicles, you know this, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek, crave, and require of necessity my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears will be attentive to their prayers offered in this place. God is shaking things. But listen to this, and then I, we're going to pray. Psalm 37, eight through, 18 through 19. 
Day by day, the Lord takes care of the innocent, and they will receive an inheritance that lasts forever. They will not be disgraced in hard times. Even in famine, they will have more than enough. That's a promise from the Lord. Okay, another one, it says in Psalm 37, it says, The wicked plot against the uncompromisingly righteous, the upright in right standing with God, they gnash at them with their teeth. The Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees their own day of defeat is coming. Yeah, there's a lot of scriptures that, that promise about Goshen, that are, like, we are, you know, the believers that are standing, we, we will be in Goshen. I believe that with all my heart. And that God will give us the wisdom. God will give us strategy for, you know, uh, because, I, you know, hard times are coming. And that, that we will be a blessing. We will be the sons and daughters of light, all right, to those in need. And um, so there's, there's, I have a lot of scriptures here. But what I want to encourage you with is where there seems to be an impossibility, God always makes a way. And I'll close with this. You, you've heard of, Al, I don't know how to say this, Al Gamanga, Guatemala, where they have had, everybody know about that and what happened in Guatemala? No? Okay. So, all right, well, then I'll read it. All right, no, I know about it. So what happened was um, they had a patron saint in their city called um, El Morte. You know, it was the spirit of death. And they would dress this mannequin up and that looked really creepy. And they would give food to it. It was idolatry. It was witchcraft. And um, there was such violence in the community. And um, so one of the pastors decided that he wanted to have prayer to, to overthrow the evil that was in the community. And some of the gang leaders there threatened to kill him. Actually, they actually, you can watch all this on YouTube. You can actually watch his testimony. They put a gun in his mouth. I mean, that's pretty scary, right? <laughs> not, they weren't just threatening. They, were, they, were, they, were gonna, they wanted to kill him. So his people, there was only a small handful of people praying. But they kept praying, and they were fasting, and they, they, they broke the curse of that spirit of El uh, Morte. And um, they, they just kept hitting heaven and just declaring that there will be a shift. And, and there really was to this day, all the, the jails closed down, the bars closed down. They have, right now, they were the poorest city in that country. And now their country, now their city has the, the, the it's like Israel. Their, their produce is enormous, that you can get um, these watermelons and these, uh, you know, they sell to, uh, throughout the world. And it's still happening to this day. And one time we showed a, a film clip of it, uh, 219. But uh, maybe we'll show it again next week. But it's, it's, that's the power of prayer. And there was so much um, uh, crime that was taking place in that city. And they were hopeless. They were so poor. But they thought, we don't know anything else to do but pray. Why, why do we get to that point? That should be the first thing. And, you know, and I really believe the Lord has released the holy frustration on many of us. And you know what? And that's God. Because when we get that frustrated, we will do whatever it takes, right, for things to shift. And so, uh, you know, I just want to encourage you with that. We, we have great authority. We have great power. What I want to do is tonight, I want us all to pray. But we, I want us first to pray in the Spirit. We're going to pray in the Spirit. And um, I want all of us to, to interact. You know, we all have something to say. I don't want to pray for Aunt Tilly tonight. Listen, when we seek ye first the kingdom of God, all these things will be added to us, right? We do the, his bidding. He takes care of ours. What we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on on uh, just shifting and getting strategy for our nation. It, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, for our state. And that, and praying for Governor Murphy, and then see how else the Spirit of the Lord leads. But I just want us to pray because, you know, this this is huge about Roe versus Wade and this overturning of that. It's huge. But now we have to fight for the individual states. And many states have, uh, are in agreement with it. But California, I know New Jersey, and I, I don't know, I guess New York, you know, they are not in agreement with uh, Roe versus Wade. And they want to make it a, up to a sanctuary state for abortion up to nine months. See, let me just say this. We were always called to pray. And the church was always called to be involved. This thing where it says the church and politics cannot mingle together is not even scriptural. It's not. 
And, and, and so now it's, again, many are seeing that. Many have gotten upset and left the church. They said, because we're not to do that. That's nonsense. We are called to be the light. We're called to pray. And uh, I, I'm not talking about being a political, having a political sphere. I'm talking about praying the issues. Dick Eastman wrote a wonderful book about um, the prayer, the hour that changes the world. Thank you. And, um, you know, he, I remember in that book, he talked about how he would just cry. It was just, it wasn't just him. You have to remember, God, the Holy Spirit gives a burden to everybody, right? And they were praying about the Berlin Wall. And he would just lay his hands and pray. And when he would see the, you know, the story come up on TV, he would pray. But, you know, we pray the news. And the wall came down. So many people were praying. But it takes all of us. To be in agreement. Why? That's no different. This is a demonic wall that's being erected, a death structure that's being erected in our state. So it's going to take continual prayer to break through. So are you ready for that? Amen. Come on, let's stand up.